Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And a very good morning uh, Today I am going to share with you uh, You means uh, my house officer uh, Medical students Or anybody who are interested in surgery So Thank you for watching my previous video in this uh, video, I'm going to share with you prophylactic antibiotic in surgical procedures. So, to those juniors and house officer or surgical resident medical officers, uh, some of you might not familiar uh, or might not used to uh, when assisting the surgery especially elective surgeries and uh, sometimes uh, you are confused whether should I give antibiotics prophylactics for this procedures or should I do uh, should I don't which one which antibiotics uh, which cases you need to give antibiotics okay before you understand about the rationale of using prophylactic antibiotics you have to understand the type of surgery you are dealing with so that actually is better explained by understanding the type of wounds okay the type of wounds there are four types of wounds okay one is clean clean contaminated contaminated and dirty so clean surgery or any simple smooth skin incision for example laceration wound or excision of the lipoma excision of the mole uh, simple surgery not to say simple clean surgery like thyroidectomy, mastectomy eh? these are considered clean surgery it means it does not breach the peritoneum or does not breach the mucosa of the hollow organs so in this type of wound the risk of post-operative wound infection is very low less than 1 or 2 percent so, if you're being posted or assist, uh, enlisted to assist this kind of operations or you are doing this kind of operation, no need prophylactic antibiotics. Eh? No need prophylactic antibiotics. Full stops. Okay. In second type of wound, clean contaminated, the risk of post-operative wound infection is between 2 to 10. Or some of the books put it higher. 5 to 15, 2 to 10, eh? 2 to 10 percent means it's high. So, what kind of wounds categorized under clean contaminated? So, uh, simple appendicectomy. Okay, so the procedure is explained or defined like any surgery where you breach the peritoneum but you not breach the mucosa even you breach you inflict minimal contaminations so that means there is control in the spillage of contaminations so simple surgery that you can uh, understand better is open appendicectomy where you cut the base of the appendix with minimal contamination control contamination or you do elective surgery where you prepare the bowel of patient for example for sickle tumor you perform right hemicolectomy a day before you give patient bowel prep so you clean the bowel eh? and then during the surgery you place the soft bowel clamp and then even you reset the bowel means you bridge the mucosa you control the contamination so this is called clean contaminated the bowel being cleaned by bowel prep and then the surgery being planned and the elective and the contamination is less so in this type of procedures 
the risk of post-operative infections 2 to 10 percent you need to give prophylactic antibiotics okay prophylactic antibiotics you have to give so uh, so uh, what type of antibiotic something to deal with the organism which grew inside the bowel most of the time gram negative and anaerobes right gram negative and anaerobes you can give iv carfovid or you can give iv zinacef together with pledges so when we give the antibiotic what do what are the doses of antibiotic i'm going to tell this after this all right okay the third type of wound is contaminated and that means the surgery is already contaminated with bacteria so example is surgery of the perforated appendix perforated gastric ulcer perforated viscous so this kind of surgeries the contamination is already taken place so there is no role of prophylactic anymore you have to give treatments main treatment have to be started the moment you di make a diagnosis so they need to complete the full courses of five days all right um, three or five days all right and so uh, other example is perforated diverticular eh? uh, you are doing with necrotizing fasciitis pernias gangrenes and this requires treatment not prophylaxis okay the fourth type of wound is uh, the T wound. This is definitely you need to give antibiotics like the third one. Example, fecal peritonitis when diverticular rupture bursts, so there is feces in the abdomen, or you are dealing with crush injury, blast injury of the uh, uh, blast injury, you have crushed legs, all those things. And these are dirty wounds where you need to give stronger antibiotics treatment need to take, uh, be more than five days okay coming to the prophylaxis antibiotic after you understand the definition of each wound you know lah, the second group where the wound is clean and contaminated these are the type of surgeries that require prophylactic antibiotics Apart from the cases or uh, the scenarios that I mentioned before, there are cases that you need to give prophylactic antibiotics. All urology procedures, the hybrid, the whole organ, you pass the scope through the urethra, eh? you pass the scope through the urethra, it means you breach the whole organs, but control. So, all type of urology procedure you need to give prophylactic antibiotics. What else? Okay, any surgery, if you just make an incision without breaching the hollow organ, you call it clean surgeries. Hernia also clean surgeries. And there is a school, two school of thought eh, whether you want to give or not in hernia surgery. If you apply mesh, when nowadays every hernia we put mesh, okay? If you apply mesh, mesh is a foreign body, like in orthopedic, this is uh, implants. When you put implants, you need, you need to give prophylactic antibiotics. So in hernia, because we put implant, you give prophylactic antibiotics. Uh, okay, eh, prophylactic antibiotics. So, uh, and patients who actually at high risk uh, diabetes eh, hormonal compromise you need to give prophylactic antibiotic as well okay talking about prophylactic antibiotics what is prophylaxis means and how you give uh, many times you go to OT eh, and the houseman follow you to OT and the antibiotics are already placed on the table and uh, the houseman diluted the antibiotics and put on the table on the trays and give to the anesthetist and then you let anesthetist give the drugs uh, usually they don't give uh, some of them who knows the principles of propriety antibiotic will give it early 
but some don't know they will give the all the GA medication first and then after that they will ask you do I need to give the antibiotics these are common scenarios eh? okay to understand prophylaxis means you need you want to give the antibiotics at higher doses and this antibiotics must reach the inoculation size inoculation site at the time you make an incision all right for to achieve minimal amount of organism at the operation site uh, it is to reduce the risk of post-operative infections so to achieve this you need to give double strength kalau zina say one point say 150 you have to give 1.5 gram if you have a normal just one gram you have to give two grams so you have to give higher concentration double strength okay and then when you want to give you need to give half an hour before surgeon make an incision so the doctors junior doctors after you dilute you ask permission from da you give it immediately then only you go and scrub and after that clean the operation wound operation field and by the time you complete everything, it's already half an hour. The antibiotic is already reached the higher concentration at the inoculation site. Means at the skin that you want to make an incision. So you make incision. Not you give at, at the same time of surgery make an operation. That defeat the purpose. Eh? So you have to give half an hour before, then only it achieve the objectives. Okay. Sometimes the operation is long, is long, longer than four hours longer than eight hours so if the operation is extending from the uh, more than four hours for example you need to give another dose of prophylactic antibiotics at four hours okay you need to give another dose of prophylactic antibiotic for short operation once is enough okay then after the surgery you need to give another dose uh, for example, uh, two more doses. It's not five days, two more doses according to the uh, frequency to complete the prophylactic antibiotics. That is about prophylactic antibiotics. So, after this, eh, uh, the doctors, junior doctors who practice in surgical department is everything is in at the tip of your hand so when you are appointed or assigned to assist the operation in, surgery, in ot you must identify what type of surgery you are dealing with so for example you're going for mastectomy means no need antibiotics if they accidentally give the antibiotic keep aside you are assisting thyroid no need antibiotics you are assisting her nap, require antibiotics prophylaxis you assisting a panapinacetomy required prophylactic antibiotics. You assisting urology procedure, cystoscopy, open vasculitis require prophylactic antibiotics. You assisting emergency laparotomy for peritonitis, you need to treat the patient. Mean antibiotics should have been started before the surgery is up and have to complete the courses minimum five days. All right. If you assisting the surgery for debridement of furnace gangrene for example this patient the antibiotic should be started earlier you assisting patient with perforated appendix the antibiotic should be started earlier and continue for five days so i hope you understand about the prophylaxis antibiotics the doses when to give the type of surgeries and i hope it is clear to you and uh, you can ask me anytime if you meet me so that is uh, for today thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh